Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here today. I am sorry that we are late. We are actually eight minutes late. Uh, a lot of questions and we went over on the other call. Uh, I want to thank you all for being here and welcome you. Um, uh, sorry about the bandage I'm wearing today. Uh, this is a good reason. And I guess my public service message is stay out of the sun, wear lots of sunscreen when you do go out. So you don't end up having uh, to look like this. So um, let's just go ahead and jump into the numbers real quick here. And I know that there's been some questions sent along, so we'll try to get to those also. Um, Tuesday's numbers at uh, 65.35, that's plus 104. And uh, Monday's at, uh, was 113. And then Sunday was uh, 208. And all I can say about the numbers are they, we continue to have a disclaimer up. Um, though Dr. Mark Alley, the Secretary of Health uh, and Human Services Agency, announced that um, 300,000 CalReady lab results backlog was resolved over the weekend. And uh, they certainly acknowledged the delay affected county efforts to combat the disease. Um, the, you know, they, they're saying that certainly the backlog has been uh, processed and sent to counties for validation. Um, but having said that, we're still not comfortable with these numbers. And that's why you still see that disclaimer up. Uh, our folks are continuing to double check. We want to put accurate information up. Um, but we don't know if these are accurate numbers yet. We're still trying to vet the numbers that the state has uh, given us to make sure that they are in fact accurate. And as you look at it now, um, we are you know, certain on the um, death toll and, and we've increased two since last week. Uh, so we're at 122 right now. You look at the R naught, if the numbers are, uh, are true, that's uh, 0.91, that's good. We wanna stay under that, that, uh, one, per, that uh, 1%. Um, and the numbers continue to, to, to rise in those areas that we've talked about. Um, and uh, we're just still trying to get that message out there for that younger generation to stay away from those parties and social gatherings. Um, and we will continue to update you on uh, uh, the validity of uh, those numbers to make sure that we're given accurate information. Uh, in regard to the confirmed uh, patients in the hospital, uh, you know, this is confirmed data. We have 45. Uh, right now, that number is good. It's down. Um, we've got only one from outside the county. So hopefully, what we're seeing in the past with the uh, prisoners from San Quentin uh, being transported here and increasing the out-of-county uh, uh, numbers um, in our uh, hospitals, hopefully that's been addressed. I think that uh, certainly San Quentin has taken steps to make sure they take care of those patients um, at their uh, location. So. Uh, our numbers are looking good, at least stable in the area of, um, uh, of hospitalizations. We've got a lot of surge beds, uh, a lot of uh, acute care beds um, uh, available. Uh, ventilators are available. All the things that you would expect, and that's why Dr. Morrow said several times that um, we believe that uh, we are stable. We have surpassed uh, 118,000 um, people tested in this county. Um, I think that uh, at the end there, you see the, the 0.281 um, average days of results. Uh, that is not true necessarily. Rarely we're hearing, you know, widespread concern about the delays there. And again, that goes to the backlog that we're seeing on testing. And, and that is uh, considerable. Test results, I should say. That is um, considerable. Uh, you know, along the, uh, the way, I also uh, get a lot of questions about uh, how do you get off the list? How do you get off the watch list? that we put on. Number one, again, I just want to reiterate that we do not feel that we should have been put on the watch list, that these numbers don't um, necessitate that type of extreme action by the state in this case, and especially since these numbers are in dispute uh, and remain in dispute at this point in time. But we certainly understand that the state uh, is, is uh, trying to do um, what's best for the entire state. And we are a county that, that feels that, uh, um, you know, we are uh, stable here right now and uh, that uh, um, it's unwarranted right now. But the question is, how do you get off? And the, and the answer to that question is, no one knows. And, and that's, uh, and that's uh, disconcerting, to say the least. Uh, we, we don't know a clear path off uh, of this list. Um, and uh, we hope that, uh, that the state is working on different metrics and, uh, and, and, and really based in science that would allow us the opportunity to get off this list. So that is something that we continue to talk to the state about. Um, we, there, there has been discussions about that. It appears that 
the state may be um, uh, moving in that direction uh, to give us more information on how we can get off and, and move on with reopening uh, some of these businesses that we have said for a while uh, we do not believe are the cause or um, the uh, location where uh, COVID-19 is spreading on a widespread basis. Um, and, and many of these businesses were taking extra precautions and um, it was probably um, you know, safer than ever there to, to, to uh, go to some of these um, locations. So with that in mind, I'll talk a little bit about the Verily testing right now. There are a total of 28,546 tested by Verily. So you'll get an idea and, and put that in context of over, the overall testing in this county and how many Verily have uh, done. And we're, we're very appreciative of Verily's efforts there uh, with 2,700 tested last week. Um, but uh, you can see that the, the numbers um, are, are small in comparison to overall testing in this county. And that's because the vast majority of people in this county do have insurance and should avail themselves of that assurance, uh, insurance, uh, if, especially if they're feeling um, sick or they have any symptoms, or if you believe that you've been exposed to someone, um, that is uh, something that you should use your own insurance for uh, and, uh, and, and not try to get into one of these more difficult um, appointments that Verily uh, has, because uh, we now know uh, that we continue to be limited in, in 500 a day uh, for the Verily testing. So uh, with that in mind, we're really pushing out that message that there are other alternatives to Verily. And uh, we're asking uh, that um, the, uh, those with insurance uh, utilize those providers uh, when, when they're feeling ill, uh, as they would in any other case. We are working on specific different strategies for the county to do more targeted uh, testing as needed when we see flare-ups and we will see flare-ups and and we won't necessarily be reporting on those flare-ups as, as we see them uh, but i but i want everybody to be rest assured that uh, our health department is on these when we see them they are uh, they have contact tracers in place to address it and uh and uh, try to get out in front of it and if necessary go in and test apartment complexes like we have in the past or go in and, and do specific testing for for neighborhoods if we uh, if we deem that that is necessary. So uh, by some of the numbers here, um, we've got uh, 14 at the AHS uh, in Redwood City with seven rooms occupied. Uh, the Bayfront Station, we've got 82 guests with 73 rooms occupied. Uh, and and uh, then we're utilizing um, 90 rooms throughout the county for another 98 guests. So we've got a total of homeless served at about 180 right now. Uh, other updates. Um, in, um, in, um, starting in September, I believe it's seven, September 7th, uh, there will be, uh, we'll be utilizing the event center. The courts will be utilizing the event center, um, for, um, for the, uh, jury selection process with, uh, it's obviously a, a large facility, um, where people can socially distance and, uh, it's, uh, um, you know, really a great location, a real asset to us in this county to have this there right now. And, uh, uh, and the courts will be utilizing that. Certainly the jury trials will be, continue to be held um, in um, Redwood City and South San Francisco, but the selection, bringing people in where you can socially distance them and keep them apart will be done there. Um, the, a great program, just a kind of a feel good program is um, really one that's been formed with uh, the health plan of San Mateo County and the, count and the county's volunteer corps. You know, volunteers write uplifting messages on pre-printed postcards to send to older adults and people with disabling conditions. We've reached so far 2,000 residents. Uh, Ellie, I don't know if you want to bring up a sample of those, but it's, it's great. It gets kids involved, it gets neighbors involved, and it's, uh, uh, it's something that I know is welcomed by those who are somewhat isolated um, or uh, you know, suffering some type of disability because of this. But you can just see some of the cute the little cards that are going out to neighbors. And again, that's the health plan of San Mateo County and San Mateo County. Um, also, the event center is responding to the needs of, uh, to, uh, for child care providers to have healthy and safe supplies. Um, so since June, those supplies have been going out from the uh, event center on just basically a voluntary uh, type of basis the, the event center is doing this. I'm not charging any kind of administrative uh, fee or anything like this, but they are 
uh, getting um, um, supplies out to these uh, child care centers. And uh, so far, they've uh, completed 256 deliveries, traveled 2,300, almost 2,400 miles. Um, also, uh, have delivered a total of uh, over almost 3,500 items have been delivered. And as peak, they were delivering 50, 50 orders per week. So just a real good a feels a feel good story there. And uh, um, we're happy to see the volunteers. We certainly encourage more volunteers to join that. Um, with that, you know, another another week has gone by. The Great Plates program continues to. Um, to really just be a shining uh, spot in this whole pandemic with um, over 2,000 uh, participants being served, 61 restaurants um, uh, involved in this, keeping employees uh, working, and a total of uh, almost uh, 7.5 million being distributed back uh, into the community in these businesses uh, with the employers. Um, you know, being able to pay their employees who are then going out and spending. It's just really a win, win, win all the way around on this program. Um, again, uh, just to reiterate, we do not, as we sit here today, have a way off uh, or know a way off of uh, the watch list. And we hope that uh, that will come at some point in time as it is a source of frustration for us right now, as it is, I'm sure, for many of those people who are operating these businesses. So with that, um, submitted questions, um, has the data stabilized and showing actual, uh, and are we showing actual information? We've talked a little bit about that. Uh, I think the, you know, the data has stabilized and we're not, uh, we're not absolutely confirming the data right now, um, but Sarija, maybe you have more information on that. Yeah, we saw a lot of progress over the weekend through Sunday and um, we'll remove the disclaimer on our website when we feel confident that all of the underreporting has been overcome. Great, thank you. Next question, there's a lot of back and forth about getting on the state watch list, what conditions need to be met to be removed from the watch list and how close are we meeting? We addressed that already. Uh, we just don't have any idea right now how to get off that watch list. And hopefully that'll be forthcoming uh, in the future as they maybe if the state looks at the metrics that they're now, um, um, uh, that they now use to put people on the watch list. Next question, it appears um, our out-of-county cases have dropped significantly. Will that stay about the same or will that change? Sarija, do you know? We know San Quentin was a factor there. Yeah, we definitely have seen fewer transfers coming from San Quentin. And I think many of you saw the situation in Imperial County that resulted in transfers all over the state earlier, um, you know, a few weeks ago. We um, have strong hospital capacity and the state acts as a regional system of care. So it's hard to predict what will happen in the future, but um, the San Quentin situation seems to have been improved. Great. Next question, Sarita, I'm certainly you can answer this. And now the county uh, tracing is fully staffed. Uh, how's that gone? Any challenges? What are we seeing there? Yeah, we're so grateful of the many public servants who joined the public health team to um, form our contact tracing workforce. We have more colleagues joining us August 24th. Um, with this expanded capacity, we're able to keep pace with the cases. We're able to reach um, clients um, early as that's our desire. We still need to overcome the delays in test turnaround times that many of our residents um, experience. So the time that we might hear they might have gotten tested four days ago. Our 14 day turnaround time for testing uh, countywide is 4.8 days. So that's a concern that we continue to work on all fronts as to what all can be done to try to learn about cases as early as possible. And then to keep trust with residents that they'll take our call and um, help us make sure that they and their loved ones can remain safe and protected. And just anecdotally, we've heard some stories from employees about, you know, the, the fact that they feel good doing this too, because they really felt, feel that they're uh, doing something very positive in this pandemic and helping others um, to, um, to stop the spread of the disease. So um, it, it's been a win-win and, uh, and we are grateful for all those uh, employees who have stepped up to meet uh, this demand. Um, how is our testing ability and uh, still low availab availability? I'll, I'll start this and then I'll turn it over to Sarija. You know, I, I addressed this a little bit earlier in that, you know, you can see that Verily is less than 25% of the uh, testing in this county 
or, or the testing of our residents in this county. Uh, so it's not the only game in town and we encourage people to really look for those other alternatives. That's what we pay insurance for and those, the vast majority of the folks in this uh, county thankfully have insurance that, that covers this. Uh, we know that the state has limited the testing of 500 a day. And in some cases we used to do a thousand a day with Verily. So that is going to be suppressed, obviously making it harder for people to get in there. So um, they need to, uh, to really um, utilize those resources that they have available to them if they are ill and, and, uh, or have symptoms and, and feel that they should get checked out. Uh, the simplest, easiest way to do it is go through your own provider. And then uh, just a little bit more about you know, uh, the fact that we are developing the ability here to go in and test um, you know, uh, in a more strategic manner and for those areas that we think are, are most important, our, our residential care facilities, um, our uh, uh, congregate living facilities where we see a uh, high density um, and maybe even a spike in an apartment co complex. We've gone in and tested an entire uh, apartment complex and we will have more of that ability uh, as we move into the future here to really deal with those spikes. And that's why it's so important that we get the, the um, test results back uh, in a timely manner so that we can go out and really kind of understand where uh, the spread of the disease is taking place and, and where we can concentrate efforts and concentrate efforts on those who have been connected uh, with, with being sick, those who have been living with them or working with them or have been exposed to it for the appropriate amount of time. So that is still being developed, but we are rolling that out to, uh, to a city here very soon on a beta test. So Sarija, I don't know if you have more information about testing. The only other thing I would add is that we are meeting the Bay Area Health Officers target of 200 tests per 100,000 population right now. That's a key metric that we look at as well as of course the state metrics. So right now the availability of testing is meeting our goals. The turnaround time is a concern as we talked about and we are continuing to try to mobilize all kinds of strategies so we have the test resource that we need for the situation that's required. Yeah, and obviously, you know, Dr. Moore was on earlier and, and said that, you know, he'd like to test every person every day, but we know that's not feasible. So we, we've got to be a little bit more strategic about it. We, we know that uh, uh, we're, we're not going to ever get to that, uh, that, that stage where we can test everybody every day. Those tests are a point in time. We don't want people to uh, go out and get a negative test and feel that they can, you know, uh, that they're invincible. These are a point in time test. Um, and uh, really, if you're feeling ill, um, that is a time to, um, if you're having these symptoms of, of uh, COVID, that is a time to go get tested um, through your primary care physician if you have one. And, and if you don't, we've got these other opportunities uh, here for you. Um, with that, uh, let's see if there's any questions. Ellie. Sure. Uh, Henrietta Burroughs has their hand raised if you want to unmute yourself. Henrietta, how are you? Well, I'm getting over a fall, but otherwise, all right. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. Well, it's, it's, um, I'm on the mend. Nothing broken, nothing fractured. Uh, the county had to meet certain metrics to stay off the watch list. So wouldn't it make sense if the county met those metrics, whatever they are, that the county could apply to be taken off the watch list? Well, yeah, I mean, some of the, I mean, one of the metrics was, uh, you know, the, the counts per day. And, and I think that those are uh, in dispute. I think we were, and correct me if I'm wrong, Sarija, I think we were in compliance with all the other metrics except the, the per count, uh, the, the per day count. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not even sure that that was, was correct. So Sarija, do you have more information on that? Yeah, just to clarify. So the, metric we exceeded was the case rate per 100,000 population. And that's had some higher days and lower days. And the state overall is assessing what are the metrics that could be most meaningful. I think what Dr. Morrow has advocated and what Mike has um, reinforced is at this point, um, we really appreciate being in dialogue with the state about what's happening on the ground. What is that telling us about the spread of the disease and what measures could help us best mitigate further spread. So um, the state is considering that feedback, but we don't have clarity as to what's required uh, or what the state will consider 
to remove counties from the list once we've been placed on the list. It's, the state has put that on pause. Okay, thank you. Ellie, uh, any other hands? Uh, yes, Sarah Wright. Hi, Sarah. Hi, uh, Sarah from the Hoffman Bay Review. Um, you've talked about the long wait time for test results, and I've heard the same thing from a lot of our residents here. Um, sometimes two weeks, sometimes never even getting a result from Verily. Um, what is the county doing to bring down that wait time, and would you consider imposing like other limitations on testing? Well, I mean, a lot of it to, to, for the Verily side, I mean, it's a state run operation, right? So that's not us uh, really regulating that. And it's, and it's just the fact that um, labs have never seen this kind of volume before and, and they're not certainly built for this kind of volume. Um, but, you know, there's, and, and that's through Verily. And most of, the, most of the wait times I hear are through Verily. I, I don't have any information um, uh, in regard to the private providers, but I can tell you, you know, when I've gone through a private provider and uh, with a loved one, it was a very quick turnaround. So you may be better off going that route um, because like maybe they have more resources or maybe they have a lab uh, actually there where, where you take your, you know, where you go to be treated. Sarija, I don't know if you have more uh, on that. Um, I don't think we're considering any imposing any restrictions right uh, now. The Verily team has let us know that they're trying to bring on additional labs as well as i believe there was some news this morning that they are considering internalizing you know lab processing so that they have more options to bring down the turnaround time for results and not be as dependent on the labs that where demand is outstripping capacity and causing the waits as mike said there's uh, different turnaround times for different uh, test testing uh, modalities most healthcare institutions have some in-house capacity so that the clinicians who need that information right away to make a good clinical decision can get the result timely. And yeah, it is a, unfortunately a local, regional, national challenge of demand outstripping uh, capacity. Thanks, yeah, I was gonna uh, follow up by asking if the alternatives are seeing a faster turnaround. So that is what you guys are seeing. Right, so and the 14 day average of turnaround time for test results for all the results that get um, reported to the public, to county public health is about five days, 4.8 days. And that's not short enough. I mean, we really wanna see it back to that 48 hours, you know, 24 hours if possible, but two days is what we were routinely seeing in the earlier days. And um, so it's a challenge. Thanks. Okay, any other questions? Uh, yes, looks like we have some questions in the chat. Um, the county has been enforcing the COVID-19 health codes. How many citations have been given out? What are the major violations? I don't, I don't have any of that information and I'm not sure we would from the cities. Um, Sarija, you might, do you have any information from environment? I don't, I'm sorry, that's not information county health um, has. Yeah. And the next question asks, at what point would you feel confident that the state numbers are accurate? Is there concern that a similar problem could happen in the future? Well, the state, uh, the secretary and uh, folks at the state have shared with us their learnings from what occurred with the CalReady system and the mitigations they've put in place to prevent them from occurring in the future. And, you know, we really um, need that strong infrastructure of the testing database and want to keep working with them on anything that can strengthen that given how reliant we are for all of us to receive those results uh, in time and enable early mitigation um, from a local level of when we'll feel confident with the data you know i think it's within days we're working through how many of that 300,000 statewide affected the results we would expect to see and we saw removing any duplicates making sure we feel confident with the data that we're reporting Great. Great. Anything else? Um, and the only other question here was, um, I think it was already answered, when do you expect San Mateo County will be removed from the state's watch list? Yeah, I think we answered that one. Great. Um, I don't see any other hands or any other questions in the chat. Okay. With that, I uh, just want to thank everyone for being on and uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you back here hopefully next Wednesday. Take care. Right, Mike, another one.